Jared Poland Fronos Photo dot com and this is your photo news fix. This fix is brought to you by the 2019 My Road Reel competition that's now in its sixth year. My Road Reel has over $1 million in prizes this year that can be won across 28 different categories. Anyone can get entered and the first 200 entries in July will get a free video mic me L. Head on over to bit.ly slash 19 to download the starter pack and get started today. First up, finally, finally, Canon has decided to release a shitty RF lens. Up until this very moment, Canon has only put out solid RF offerings from the 28 to 70 F2 to the 50 and 85 1.2 and even the 35 1.8. The shitty lens I'm referring to is the newly announced 24-240 f4-6.3 IS. Now in reality, it's probably not shitty, but I am still waiting for Canon to send me one to really determine if it's shitty or not. On top of covering a 10x zoom range, this lens incorporates what Canon calls Dynamic IS. Now Dynamic IS, for those who don't know, turns your non-IBIS bodies into IBIS bodies. Really? No, Dan. Not really. This is the first full frame lens to offer dynamic IS, which allows for smoother video when shooting a video, because that's what it does. On top of that, you will get up to five stops of stabilization, which will help you with your low light shooting of photos and video. Canon was kind enough to include a few sample images that demonstrate the zoom range, like this one at 24, 50, 100, and 240 millimeters. So basically it lets you zoom in on underaged look girls? Not exactly the marketing message I would have chosen. In all reality, this is the perfect lens to pair with the EOS RP. Most consumer-minded people want one lens to rule them all, and this might be it. How much is it? Well, thanks for asking, Dan, because Canon's press release says it's priced at a budget-friendly price point of only $900. Now, I'm not sure when just shy of $1,000 became budget-friendly, because someone needs to tell these companies that budget-friendly for a consumer anything is like $499 or less. The price is wrong. Nonetheless, if you've been waiting for the lowest-end RF lens, this one can be yours sometime in September. Continuing on with another budget-friendly lens, Sony has unleashed the FE 35mm f1.8 that is dubbed the lightest in its class. That was actually Dan. Now, I'm not sure that's an important title, but someone at Sony must think that it is. At only 280 grams, the compact dimensions and light weight of this full-frame large aperture prime lens provide mobility and convenience for shooting a wide range of subjects. Now, let's look at that statement for a second. Large aperture? No. 1.4, 1.2, those are large apertures. 1.8, they still use floaties in the pool, or as I like to call them, swimmies. The message Sony is pushing with this lens is that it has great image quality. They claim that it is sharp edge to edge even when shooting wide open. There's a nine blade circular aperture, linear drive AF motor, and some customizable focus buttons on the shaft of the lens. Now you know what it's missing? A G. Bang, bang, bang. And a master. It's just an FE, yet carries an affordable price of only $750. Again, $750 is not budget friendly. Bitch. If it were a 1.4 G or G Master, then yes, it would be considered affordable for a 1.4. Now, Canon has a 35 1.8 ISRF lens for $499. Now that's affordable. Nikon, on the other hand, has an $850 overpriced 35 millimeter 1.8. S. Now at the end of the day, no matter how marketing wants to spin it, 750 bucks is overpriced. Now what do you think? And finally, with the photo world thinking that Canon's in trouble, a new report on which companies own the largest global market share was released. In 2018, the digital camera market was down 22%, with the top five companies holding 85.2% of the market share. Now you know what company wasn't on that list, Dan? Pentax! That is correct, Pentax. The total number of units moved was 20,290,000, and most of that can be found here at the factory. The breakdown has Canon
Canon on top with 40.5% of the global market, Nikon with 19.1%, Sony with 17.7%, Fuji with 5.1%, and Olympus with 2.8%. That's funny, 2.8%. Should have been 1.4%. It's, it's a joke, Dan. It was f***ing funny, all right? Honestly, I don't understand what the numbers are based on. Are they based on actual sales or are they based on shipments? Where is the data coming from? Are the big box stores reporting sales? Because from what I know, they don't share their actual sales numbers. Now, if it's shipments, anyone could spend a ton of money and ship a bunch of product to become number one until they actually run out of money. But if it's sales and somehow these numbers are validated, then it looks like Canon is doing extremely well. But who knows? There's really no way to know who's doing well and who's not, unless a company point blank puts out honest sales numbers. Oh, what's that, Dan? Pentax has just taken the lead? And there you have it, that's your photo news fix. This time around to check out the last fix, go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'll leave it. Jared Poland, Photo. Dot com. See ya.